While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plan perishes. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, his God. Who made heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them? Who keeps truth forever? Who executes justice for the oppressed? Who gives food to the hungry? The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. Amen. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the father, less and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, all generations. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It says, Praise the Lord while I have my being. Do you have your being? Do you have your being? I know I have my being. So today I will praise the Lord. Amen. We may be seated. Amen. I want us to open Mark chapter 6 from verse 14. Open together, Mark chapter 6, verse 14. And the word of the Lord says, Now King Herod heard of him, for his name had become well known. And he said, John the Baptist is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. Others said it is Elijah, and others said it is a prophet, or like one of the prophets. But when Herod heard, he said, This is John, whom I beheaded, he has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had sent and laid hold of John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. Because John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Therefore Herodias held it against him and wanted to kill him, but he could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just and holy man, and he protected him. And when he had him, he did many things, and he heard him gladly. And an opportune day came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a feast for his nobles and high priests and the chief men of Galilee and when Herodias daughter herself came in and danced and pleased Herod and those who sat with him and the king said to the girl ask me whatever you want and I will give it to you he also swore to, to her whatever you ask me I will give you up to half my kingdom so she went out and asked went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. Immediately she came in with haste to the king and said, and, and asked, say, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. Yet because of the oath and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head, his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to the mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took away his corpse and laid it in a tomb. So the verse that I want us to pay attention to is from verse 21 to verse 23. You can read it yourself just one more time. 
Amen. 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 So, um, some couple of years ago, on a very special season, we had one of our own stand here and preach a message that stuck with me throughout time. And the title of the message was Shake the Heavens for the Sake of the Earth. Amen. 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 Shake the heavens for the sake of the earth. And that message was very timely. Amen. Very timely for the season of inheritance. To an extent, we, we had to prove how worthy we are. Huh? So yeah, Lord, we are worthy of this inheritance you're giving us. You know, you, you had to take out your best. Herodias had to dance her best to show, you know, how worthy she was of this inheritance of the king. It was a moment of, eh, that time people had to show up to church early, eh, the whole week in prayer, just to prove themselves to God. Amen. Shaking the heavens, shaking the blessings out of the hands of the Lord. Shaking inheritance out of the house of the, doing heaven like this, telling him, eh, pia me niko, huh? Even me, Lord, I am here. Eh? Even before Bishop says, come, those who want to come, before he calls, roll call twice, you're here. Altar call twice, you figured, because you're proving yourself to the Lord. It was contention, competition, almost, me and you, showing the Lord who can dance the best. So uh, it was very timely, very, very timely. Yeah? Esau had to show he could hunt the best game for his father, for the blessing that his father could give him. The best. It was for the best. Amen. Inheritance. Hallelujah. We had to wrestle with the Lord uh, till dawn for our blessing, for our inheritance. Uh, shaking the heavens for the sake of the earth. Shaking, 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 shaking. Until indeed it shook. Yeah. We wrestled with Yahweh till dawn with our injured hip. Yeah, now we've come, we've been blessed with our injured hip, ready for, ready for season 20, episode 22. Hallelujah. For our name to be changed, from Jacob now we are Israel, God has prevailed. Hallelujah. Shaking the heavens, shaking the heavens, shaking the heavens for the sake of the earth. There's a reason why that message stuck with me up to today. Anyway, let's proceed. We'll come back to that. Let us open the book of 2 Samuel. Kindly let us open 2 Samuel. The story of David. Very interesting. His, his, his story is very interesting as a king. From when he was a boy to when he became a king. From chapter 6 and chapter 7. Chapter 6 talks about uh, this young man. I'm not sure how young he was, but we can assume he was a young man called Uza. So we'll read from, uh, from verse 1. Chapter, Second Samuel chapter 6 from verse 1. And it says, Again David gathered all the choice men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people who are with him, from Baal, Judah, to bring, him, to bring up from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. So they set an ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was an Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. Then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments, of fir wood, on herbs, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on cistruments, and on cymbals. And when they came to Nashon, threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand on the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. 
put your finger on that verse. Verse 6. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused was aroused against Uzzah and God struck him for his error and he died there by the ark of God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah and he called the name of the, of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day and he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David, but David took it aside into the house of Obed Edom the Gigite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom, the Gigite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark. So David so David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with gladness. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six places, that he sacrificed oxen and fattened sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of trumpet. Amen. Now you see, let's go back to verse 6, where it says, Um... And when they came to nation threshing, nation's threshing, Uzzah put out his hand on the ark of God and took, and took hold of it for the oxen stumbled. Amen. The oxen stumbled, Uzzah died. Amen. The Lord was angry. But then this situation of the oxen stumbling rings a very similar bell. It feels very familiar to a story in the New Testament when Jesus and his disciples were in a boat and there was storm. There's some very similar resemblance. And the storm was so much, Peter lost his, his faith. Yani the oxen stumbled so much <laughs> that Uzzah lost his faith. Amen. Uzzah lost his faith in the God and he, he saw perhaps he could, he could help the integrity of the Lord. He could, he could assist the integrity of the Lord because the ark was the presence of God. Amen. Peter saw that he could help Jesus help the integrity of Jesus by waking him up and telling him master we are dying there is storm wake up lost faith yes the storms were many yes the oxen stumbled but it wasn't so much it was the, the storm wasn't they weren't sinking were they it was just a storm that was pushing the boat like this, the boat like this. It was, it was, it was shaking. Sour, sour. So the oxen stumbling doesn't mean that the, the ark of the Lord was falling. Amen. So Uzzah felt that it was his responsibility to help God. Same to the disciples, Peter. You see, it's so familiar with this, he was familiar with the ark because it was at home with them. So he was used to the presence of the of the Lord in, with the ark of the covenant. He was familiar with it. Sawa sawa. So I think he forgot. It slipped his mind. He slipped his mind that this is this is not just the ark. This is not just something. It's not the chair or the thing we see in the house every day. This is something different. Amen. Uza. Helping God is a very big problem. Amen. Moses also tried to intervene to help God. So instead of speaking to the rock, he strikes it. He's like, let's strike it because, you know, I feel like I have the responsibility to strike it so that it can remove God. And that costed him the right to enter into the promised land. Amen. And I believe that glitch, that, that storm, that, that oxen stumbling meant a, a season 
change. Amen. A season was changing when the, when the oxen just stumbled and when there was storm, that season was changing because in both it weighs faith. According to me though, it weighs, it weighed faith. So that stumbling, I feel, I feel like it was a season changing. And a season that has changed, which I know for sure, we have come from the place of shaking the heavens for the sake of the earth. Hey, for the sake of the earth. Shaking the heavens from the sake of the earth. And now we've come to a place of covenant. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, 2 Samuel chapter 7. God makes a covenant with David. So we'll read. Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, King David, and the Lord had given him rest for all his enemies all around. That the king said to Nathan, the prophet, See now I dwell in the house of Seda, but the ark of God dwells inside the tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go to all that is in Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, that says the Lord, would you build a house for me to dwell in? Put your finger there. Verse 5. Now verse 6. For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I even spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel saying why have you not built me a house of cedar now therefore thus shall you say to my servant David thus says the Lord of hosts I took you from the sheepfold from following the sheep to be a ruler over my people over Israel and I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies from before you and have made you a great name like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them anymore and previously, since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies, also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Verse 5, let's read it again. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, will you build a house for me to dwell in? Amen. Haggai chapter 1. Let's go to Haggai chapter 1. From verse uh, 3 to 11. <laughs> then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled house and the temple to lie in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and brought in little. You eat, but you not have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put him in a bag with holes. Verse 7, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much. But indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house, that it is in ruins, while every one of you, of you runs to his own house. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth 
on men and livestock and on all that labors, all the labor of your hands. So a covenant with God, a covenant with God we've come into is supposed to bring blessing. It's supposed to bring blessing, not only to us, but the seed of our generations, our, our generations to come. But now the season we've coming, this season of covenant requires one thing. David, will you build a house for me to dwell in? David, eternity, will you build a house for me to dwell in? Because the Bible says somewhere in the New Testament, I can't remember the first part, but then it goes on to say, but the son of man has nowhere to, to lay his head. Amen. Will you build a house for me to dwell in? That I may make a covenant with you and your generations. Will you make a house for me to dwell in? But I am here to say today, I bear good news, hallelujah. I bear good news, hallelujah, that eternity has not left the house of the Lord in ruins. The eternity has built a house for the Lord to dwell in. Hallelujah. The mother, son of man, man has somewhere to lay his head. The son of man has a dwelling place. That's why it is our right today to walk into covenant with the Lord. To walk in covenant. Why? Because we have not left the house of the Lord in ruins. The Lord will not withhold his fruit. The Lord will not withhold the dew from heaven. The Lord will not cause the land to be barren. The Lord will cause the nations to open. The Lord will cause and will continue to cause and bless him will continue to come. Because we have not left the house of the Lord in ruins. Hallelujah. The Lord said, ah, will you build a house for me to dwell in? And we said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we will build. And we built. Amen. Now this season is a beautiful one. You know the food you eat, you, you leave it clean. This season is a beautiful one like now. Now, now, ooh, now, now, hey, just stand, stand, because this is good news. Now, now we've not in a, we're not in a place of shaking the heavens for the sake of the earth. Now we've come to a place with the Lord has moved us away. He said, you've provoked me enough. Now, Shall be greater than the former, 
says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give you peace. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord he shall restore. Why? Because we started kingdom first. Build me a temple. Yes, Lord, I'll build. We're not helping the Lord here now. Now we're not shaking the hand of the Lord. Oh, now he's shaking it for us. Now he's shaking the heavens for us. Hallelujah. No wonder prisons, the, when Paul and Silas were in prison, no wonder they were shaking. The Lord was shaking the heavens and the earth for their sake. Why? Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Paul and Silas were put the kingdom first. It was right in front before everything. And they built for the Lord a house for him to dwell in. And they sh he shook the prisons and the earth for the sake of Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Now, as I finish, what happens when the Lord shakes? Psalms 99. I mean, Psalm 29. Let's read from verse 1. Give unto the Lord, all you mighty one. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The Lord, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Now, verse 5. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flame of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. The deer strips the forest bare. And his temple, everyone says glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. And the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with it. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. Ah, the voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. No wonder the, the, the one that came to bishop was this. Thank <laughs> you. 
what you can do is see. 